Good afternoon, uh, good day. Um, I'm here at the Wellbeing Sanctuary just outside Setchfield uh, at uh, the Spring Equinox in this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful surroundings uh, with the uh, gorgeous, beautiful Mariette Carstens, co owner of this land. Mm. Um, and we've, we've had four days of uh, just a beautiful festi festival around the Equinox. And yesterday I had a talk. Uh, around my um, uh, topic I'm so passionate about, semen retention and orgasm without ejaculation. There were 25 people in a, in a, in a group, uh, like seven, eight or so I think were women. And mm. I was just so blown away by the, by the response from, from the women and mm. the input and the, the discussion was just so, so heartwarming and so uh, enlightening <laughs> and so rich information for everyone in the group. Um, so yeah, I've invited Marie to, to, have a, to have a chat with me today mm. and so thank you for, uh, for first of all for this land, you know, for being here, number one. Number two, thanks for being in the work, workshop or the talk yesterday mm. and thanks for, for talking to us. Yeah, no, it's, you're welcome. Uh, it's also a passion of mine, so I love feeling the resonance and it's lovely to have like-minded people on the land and I mean we're building a new future all together. So it's, Good times. Oh, wonderful. And out of yesterday's workshop, mm. anything that springs to mind? Um, there was such beautiful sharing from, from everyone and from the women and from you also. Um, yeah, anything that, that just that, 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 that may be bubbling up that you can mm. think that may be good to repeat for the people that weren't in a workshop? Anything yeah. that you feel would like to share? Definitely. Um, I really related to what you said about. <coughs> Um, through the practice of non-ejaculatory intercourse you can you know create and retain and circulate a lot more energy mm -hmm. and you were talking about the hangover you know mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you experience if you do ejaculate so this particular topic of how uh, we can circulate create retain energy um, do the alchemy of aging is something that I'm very passionate about. So mm -hmm. as a woman, I feel like sometimes, you know, as, uh, uh, because I'm 52 this year, mm -hmm. um, I've always had this challenge of being better <coughs> every decade and uh, like topping the decade before and thinking consciously about what it is that I want to do. And so I've noticed over the years that my journey my sexual journey, my development, my opening up on that path, of course, is it's kind of exponential. Mm. So it gets so much better. And especially now, I feel like now it's actually really only blooming. And so how you can, for men and women, work with this life force that is within us um, through sexual practices to um, use it to stay healthy and vibrant and um, youthful um, is, is, is really a passion of mine. So I was very, um, yeah, I'm, I was just very happy to hear that that's one of the first things that you mentioned in your talk, that this is there for men, um, because I think um, it's, it's a very powerful path to investigate. It's, there's a lot there, a lot more than we can even imagine. Yeah, it's amazing. And, and, and you know, and in the workshops I've had guys of like in their 70s. Mm. And it's so, and you see the vibrancy and of the, and the liveliness of, of, of these guys is so amazing, you know, there's mm. no, it's so beauty, beautiful to see us being staying vibrant and alive as we, as we grow old, so yeah. it's, it's beautiful. There, there was some other, just something popping up now that I thought was really so powerful you, that, you, that you shared and it, uh, on two areas, the first one was a number of areas, but the one part of the discussion was also someone asking what is, uh, for, for a guy practicing um, ejaculation choice how can his partner how can a woman assist mm. and help in the process mm. any thoughts on that yeah i i think it's a it is a partnership um mm. and um, <coughs> I, I mean i've been blessed to experience um relating on uh, in this way and i was quite surprised at how much power i had in in holding space mm. uh mm. for my partner in that moment for them to experience um, this deepening and this greater bonding and this going into what feels like the void. It's this, this space beyond mind 
So there's a lot of sexual interaction that I feel is almost like a plant journey. It works through layers of mind and then you get beyond mind and it just poof, it just opens up like that and then you can experience it in a partnership with someone else. When you're alone in meditation, it feels good. But if you do it in a partnership with someone else and you are almost like we're sitting in Lotus and you're kind of circling in this space, then it becomes um, transcendental. Sure. It's a space beyond mind that you can enter into. So there's so many ways that you can assist each other. Like for me, I had to be conscious of the fact that I almost wanted to kind of enjoy this power that I had mm. in this moment like oh, well okay I can make you come for example <laughs> yeah. or and then letting that drop uh. I, I think um, when you're not attached to the primal orgasm anymore you're more interested <coughs> in the journey it's not uh, we are having sex to uh, orgasm together it's it's uh, we want a journey together then you really actually feel how much power you have so mm. if your partner wants to practice non-ejaculatory intercourse then he, they need you to hold space for them so having a, a word that creates more space like a, a wait you don't have to say stop but yeah, you yeah. know sometimes we say stop like okay i don't want to come here stop. <laughs> but if you want to practice this as a principle it's like wait and then we wait together and the eye real deep eye gazing eye contact never break the eye contact mm. think about circulating energy through the eyes down the back of the spine through the genitals in mm. the your partner's genitals up the spine at the back of the heart back out through the eyes because you want to draw the energy up into the heart and up into the mm. crown mm. so the release is through the crown instead of through mm. the genitals which of course it just gives you more variety more um, yeah more space to to play in um, and yeah and having clear communication about expectations and what might come up because I think a lot of stuff comes up when mm. we um, go to that space beyond mind you're entering the subconscious part our higher state of being um, and so what might have been suppressed what usually gets released through habituary ejaculation and habituary primal, uh, primal like clit clitoral orgasms which is also the female mini penis mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. you lose a lot of energy so that energy can literally be used for healing um, for bonding and certainly for like the alchemy around aging cool i love that word wait yeah, that's, <laughs> wait that's, yeah wait rather than stop it's, okay. that's lovely mm. yeah and it's so great to uh to uh so this is so powerful because for the guys on the on a journey can also play this to you know to this interview to to their to their partners you know mm. so beautiful to not to just hear it coming from me but also from a woman you know how, mm. how they can assist with that feminine really being a woman yeah. yourself you know in that space it's it's uh, it's so powerful um there was also some talk about uh and you raised also but really but i thought was a beautiful point yesterday about the masculine and the process we've been through uh, over the last mm. many years and where you see it going forward uh, mm. <laughs> expand a bit more on that mm. there are a lot of <coughs> stories there are a lot of role plays for example around betrayal and mm. trust uh, between men and women the masculine and the feminine and it's a very triggering topic mm. um, and so we've gone through this whole process of you did this to me and and then oh I'm so sorry and um, but I think there are a lot of women and men that are ready to step beyond that and that we should get come together and and discuss how mm. can we support each other in this process where we <coughs> we're not angry with each other anymore we've dropped the story we understand mm. those lessons we, we, we know it's our story, it's our chessboard. That, this is my chessboard. I'm the king and the queen on my chessboard. That's mm. my masculine, that is mm. my feminine. Um, and then, yeah, we are ready to hold space for men on this level and they can, for them to be vulnerable, for them mm. to surrender, mm. for their feminine to come up, for their emotions to come up. Um, because I think there's a lot of suppression, um, sadly, for men mm. from when mm. they're very little. It's also like the fun and lightness of it in our previous chats, you know, about oh, the whole yeah. process, you know. Yeah, um, you have but to. Just, you know, but just yeah, just generally yeah. speaking, any, any just... Well, I mean, I've, I've got 
um, children so mm. you know I'm very conscious of this now as a practice for my boys yeah. and talking to, to you know, talking to them about mm. it they're super curious mm. in it mm. um, that's also what I loved about your workshop yesterday because you started with a very in a very practical place like mm. just breaking it down um, um, just starting and also kind of holding space through a group that mm. joins and can mm. share their feelings um, yeah young people are super interested in that they want to communicate about mm. it they want to learn about their own bodies um, and find their own pleasure connect with your own pleasure and then have some maturity in that even before you then share it with someone else and then right at the end um, you know those final few decades of where we're really coming into our wisdom and um, we have integrated so much of the process that we've been involved with through the dramas and the stories both those I feel are very powerful I feel the young people need this and then the older generation um, they are still kind of just coming into this in a new way when the young people are ready to receive it and so I feel we need to look at ourselves and come into this really vibrant, juicy, sexy space where we cool about it and mm. young people find that we are cool so we can share with them about it. Otherwise, yes. there's also this complete like, kind of separation between the generations sure. where, sure. Um, yeah, we, we can really impart such incredible wisdom and resurrect this discipline I feel yeah and you want to be sexy in your 50s 60s 70s 80s why it's not better 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 and then better. the young people will listen to you if you're super sexy yeah, you know? and you're, you're vibrant and you're full yeah. of life and what you then you know say you know propose or invite them to do you also live and breathe that isn't it yeah they can uh, see they need uh, they don't want to be told they want to see be led through example yeah. their models and yeah. they want they can sense it from you because they yeah. full of this life energy sure. um, if you sexually suppressed you know like yourself then they're gonna they're gonna feel it you know so 100 percent. and then they oh, still they, we have an opportunity to especially also through conscious <coughs> parenting and conscious sexuality remove these blockages and this is like the generational relay race whatever is unresolved within us we hand over to the next generation and why not hand them a powerful mm. tool than some of what's in our old backpack no yeah, sure and as you were saying yesterday asking me like because that sounds 13 16 years old is the right time and i went yes that's the perfect time yes. go for it when they ask uh, the question they're yeah, ready to they're receive ready. the answer wonderful thank you for uh for this beautiful uh you know, space and for this time together I really landed into this land I feel I'm gonna stay a little bit in the garden root space for, for, for mm. a few weeks um, and then for yeah for anyone that's that's interested in this this festival happens like around the equ equinox mm. and about this and around the solstices yes uh, this is the uh, 2021 now that we're talking <laughs> so the next one is uh, December um, uh, 10 to 10th to the 24th of, yeah. um, of December Mm. And uh, I've spoken to the guys, I think Dion is saying they're going to keep it to 400, so it's going to be nice and intimate and small. Yes. So, yes. yeah, for anyone that's in South Africa, and even if you're not in South Africa, uh, uh, jump on a plane or jump in a car, come and join this beautiful space and uh, the beautiful heart people here. Mm. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs>